<laughs> Why? Why is that happening? And then I was so much more excited <laughs> <laughs> to know that it was Solomon because this is way cooler stuff. As he mentioned, he works at Paperless Post, but aside from that, he can't keep himself from hacking government data. He's been looking at 30 years of government spending and budget data. Yeah. Which is amazing. It's not only analyzed, I bet the government hasn't even analyzed this stuff. And he's going to share with us his analysis, his visualization. Without further ado, Solomon Khan, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is a question for everyone. Um, not including if you check the link or from my visualization. Has anyone here ever seen the U.S. budget? Okay. So, so you guys, you guys, the, the people of you who have are, are exceptions. Um, so arguably the U.S. budget is like the most important document for any person who is a citizen of the country to understand what the government is actually doing. I mean, whatever you say is fine, but when you look at where the money goes, that's kind of what is actually happening. And what I found was that there was a complete lack of good information being disseminated by news organizations, politicians, etc. And that we as individual people had no accessible way to come to our own conclusions about like what was going on with the U.S. budget. Um, you know, so as opposed to like a corporation, um, you know, corporations every year have like very simple financial statements that anyone is used, anyone who has even a rudimentary background in ever looking at a company can go read their financial statements and you see the budget, you know, they see, you see the balance sheet and you see the cash flow statement and you see the income and you can, you can look at a corporation. But, you know, we as citizens who all have a stake in what the country is doing have no equivalent way to judge how our government is, is spending money. So um, part of this project was to give a tool to help people be better informed citizens and to let any person, you know, in a completely nonpartisan way to be able to look at the data without it being filtered through anyone with an agenda and to use the knowledge that they gained and use a tool to ask questions and, and come to their own conclusions about things. Okay, you know, one of the, one of the, so, so you hear a lot of statements in the media of like, you know, we, 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 we added 10 billion here and 100 million here and, and when you hear numbers, you know, we, we data people are probably a lot better at judging the difference between big numbers. But someone listening on the news isn't going to necessarily pick up as quickly that 100 million is only 1% of 10 billion. And when you put two things together, you, you kind of make them equivalent when really, in a, in, in a more accurate way, what you could have said was, pretty much we did this $10 billion thing, and oh yeah, this $100 million thing doesn't make a difference. So, so that's, that's something that I found. Um, I, I wanted to give something that people could, could, could look, at, look at the data, and also have agency themselves to be able to make, make decisions based on what they learned about, about the U.S., government budget and what we spend money on and how we make money. Okay, so here is a demo of the project that I built. And it is a visualization using uh, d3.js. And what it does is it lets you look at any year of the US budget from 1976 to 2013. And it builds a tree map for you. And with this tree map, you can go and you can see, okay, in 2012, Health and Human Services, we spent $888 billion in Health and Human Services. That was 22% of the total expenses in the U.S. budget. Meanwhile, we spent $523 billion on the Treasury. 
that was 13% of the U.S. budget. And education, we spent 2.89% of the U.S. budget on education. You know, and meanwhile, I think I, I saw this clip online of every single U.S. president for the past 30 years talking about how, you know, my number one goal is education. And every single presidential candidate and every single Senate candidate goes and says, oh, yeah, I care about education. And no one has the tools to challenge them and to say, well, according to the budget that you've passed, you care 2.89% about education. And no one, no one has the, no one, because no one has this data, no one has it in front of them in a way that they can understand. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, just quickly, what's that square feature on uh, this? This one, this is Social Security. Oh, okay. And this is defense. Okay, so, so now, but you may be asking, okay, so 800, you know, defense, $650 billion. That seems like a lot. How, how has that changed over time? So with this visualization, you can click on any, any, any cell in the visualization and see a, a graph of how that number has changed over time from 1976 until today. So obviously, the amount that we spend on defense today is enormous, preposterously enormous. No, this is nominal dollars. This is nominal dollars. It's, it's enormous. However, the astute, the astute people in the room will probably say, but wait, hold on, because um, dollars today are worth less than dollars in 1976 due to inflation. So I took the CPI data from the Treasury website, and you can adjust this to inflation-adjusted data so that when you see a graph you can look at it and you can say, okay, here's the inflation adjusted dollars. Now, this lets you look at things and make decisions that you, you might not have been able to make before. So for example, who in this room knew that right now in 2012, we spend more money after inflation on defense than we did at the peak of the Cold War? That's an interesting stat that probably no one in this room thought. Like everyone, pro that was something I thought. I thought we had, oh, <laughs> Sorry, you probably I knew. The you knew, budget. you knew, Sorry. okay. But everyone, for everyone else, for everyone else, <laughs> like who would know that, who would, who would know this stuff? And this is, this is important stuff that doesn't get covered anywhere. So, so um, you know, other, other things to look at, like the Treasury is interesting to look at because you see it coming along, coming along, coming along. Oh, snap, what is that in 2008 where, you know, you've, you've suddenly doubled the, doubled the expenditure in the Treasury. Um, so what's interesting is you can change to any year, and this visualization is actually multi-levels deep. It's three levels deep. So you can double click on treasury and you can see inside the treasury what makes up the what makes up the expenses that that sort of bubble up into the treasury department. What's so the color, uh, the color coding is just my own color coding. Larger, larger expenses are different colors than smaller expenses. Um, so you can see interest on the public debt and this departmental offices category which didn't exist <laughs> And then suddenly, oh, wait, here's, you know, $117 billion, inflation adjusted for $1976, which in today's dollars are, or in 2008 dollars, are $200 billion. So suddenly $200 billion comes in. So what's up with that? What's up with that? So you can click on it and you can see, okay, GSE preferred stock purchase agreements. <laughs> That's Freddie and Fanny. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is the kind of stuff that like this tool can help you go through and 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 learn about and ask questions. And you know, in that education data, only only thirty percent of that two percent goes to elementary and secondary education. A lot of it is for student aids for college students. 
and a lot of it is for post-secondary education. And during the, hold on one second, currently a big portion of it I think is the Jobs Act, but I can't find that right now. Okay, um, so so yeah, so you can use this to to make to to come to conclusions and make decisions and explore something that's really important for all of us in in uh, in kind of an easy and intuitive way. Oh, another really interesting thing that probably no one would know is that a lot of people talk about. Um, the debt level in this country and how we are at an unprecedented level of debt in comparison to many historical times. But what's interesting is that when you look at the interest on the public debt, we actually pay less interest now on our debt than we did in 2000 in in the in the mid 90s. So, however, However much, however much the, the burden of that debt is, it's, it's less than in the 1990s, which is another interesting thing that I would never have thought unless I actually looked at the data. Okay, so, um, oh, you can also look at anything on a per capita basis also, so $358 per person. That's gone down a lot, actually. It's $360 per person now, and in the 90s, it used to be $472 a person. All right, so, so uh, I'll tell you about how I built this project and how everything came about. Um, I found the data on uh, the whitehouse.gov website. President Obama had his budget proposal there, and in that proposal was this really awesome CSV file with uh, the 4,000 line item budget and the uh, expenses and oh you can switch between income and expenses on the visualization also so you can see what taxes come in corporations pay a very small percentage of taxes people pay most of it it's interesting to look at check it out um, so it, it was just a CSV file you know there are a lot of challenges in government and in industry about big data but oftentimes small data is equally as important and compelling in order to make the type of decisions that, that people want to make. So I found the CSV file and I decided to try to make something that could be useful because I had like a financial background before I worked at Paperless Post and I'm just interested in that. Um, okay, then is the working hard portion of it. Um, it took me, I, I, it took me probably, I mean, and this is part time, it took me probably six months between when I first decided like this is a project I want to pursue until I launched it. Um, and I had a bunch, I had a, or I had a version that worked kind of like pretty quickly, but I think that showing it to lots of people and getting a lot of feedback and building all of those extra features like, you know, the per capita stuff and graphing things over time and just putting in that extra effort to make it like visually appealing, which isn't my strong suit really, and also to make it simpler was very useful because it opens up opens up the possibility of just regular people using it. Um, okay, and let me show you the source code real quick. Uh, everything is open source, uh, GitHub, Solomon, slash US budget. So uh, check out the code, pull requests are welcome. Um, if you want to add features, we can talk about that. Um, it's pretty much all of the heavy lifting is in D3 and underscore. So I'm essentially using underscore to do terrible things to the CSV file. And like, it's not always the prettiest. And if it was, if it was, if this was like, the, the code is not terrible. There's pretty much, there's, no, it's, 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 no, it's, it's, it's not bad. There's like, there's like four or five, there's four or five objects that do like a lot of heavy lifting. It's, it, 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 it's relatively understandable. It's always tough to read other people's code, but this is pretty straightforward. Um, it's only, it's only 1100 lines, so it's manageable. And a lot of the functionality is similar, like a lot of that is mixed up between there's, 
because I don't trust when updates are going to happen that like the expenses portion is going to match up. Like the CSVs are not exactly the same between the expenses and the receipts. So even though I knew I wanted the end format of like the, the, the JSON data to be the exact same once I finished doing what I needed to to the CSV, I split it up to have separate functions for the expenses spreadsheet and for the, for the receipts spreadsheet, which is like the income data. So that's a decent portion of that. It's pretty understandable. You can go through, there's like a, there's a display object which does like all of the, all of the visualization, like the actual visualization is like this, this, this like 60 line portion right here where it's just like set up tree map and it builds the tree map, oops, sorry, and then update tree map data and that just, you, you send the data to it and it updates it. Um, I'm happy to go through source code with anyone that ever wants here or offline. So uh, get in touch and if you have any issues or pull requests, GitHub and fork it and you know, okay. All right. Okay, so next steps for the project. Um, there's a bunch of things that I think can be improved on this. So one of them is that as you start going through the data, um, like here, so oh, over here also you can show a list of everything so that you see it in, uh, in list form. Um, and this is just treasury, but when you get to the like, when you get to the full budget, there's a lot of weird stuff. Like what does action mean? Like what is action? This has never done anything, but it's on the budget. Okay. Um, hold on. Goldwater Scholarship. What? <laughs> oh yeah, here, Barry Goldwater Scholarship and Excellence in Education Foundation, which also never did anything. Never, never really. Well, if I it's, I think it's. Edit per capita, right? They were too tiny. Oh yeah, good call. Okay. Total. There we go. Thank you, folks. Okay. So yeah. Um, you'll see stuff like Merit Systems Protection Board. Like, who are they protecting? What does Merit Systems mean? Like, what, what is that? And you see that, like, okay, they are, uh, you know, $30, $40 million part of the budget. And I am positive that, like, no one knows what, like, what is that? What does that mean? And there's a lot of stuff like that. Did you, yeah, did you find out what it was? No. This I even this is not prepared. I just looked at it right yeah. now and I there's there's commission. There's a lot. There's there's a lot of stuff here that like when you go through it, you look at yourself and you're like, what does that mean? So and like how did it happen? And for big stuff it's even more important. It's like, oh okay, that GSE stuff where it was two hundred billion, like I happen to know it's Fannie and Freddie because I did a lot of background and like figured that out. But like, I would love to create like a data set explaining all of the line items and what they are and where they come from and why they're there and what they do. And yes, who did it? Who sponsored the legislation that created it? So that kind of stuff I think would be really, really helpful. Um, other things that I think Anyone who has ideas for how to spread the word about this or like better, better, better help with journalists. Yeah, like any, anyone, anyone that has any type of like connections or anything like that definitely would be like super helpful. Um, code contributions, um, as far as like someone had an idea of like putting up the president and the Congress and who was in charge of every year. And I think that would be interesting. And there's there's a lot of stuff that we can do to tie this to other things that is is pretty straightforward. That is just if people want to help help out. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you very much. And um, I'm excited to talk to the people that are interested in this in the in the breakout session. Yeah. <laughs> for questions before the breakout session. Does anyone have anything burning that they want to ask Tom about that? Do you want to be a part of the Sunlight Foundation yet? Yeah, right? I have, I have like, one person who I kind of know, but I'm all... all he knows Sunlight Foundation. Oh, okay. yeah. I was in Knight Foundation, too. Uh, do you use uh, a budget, like, so is it for White House or, like, 
propose continuing resolution? Okay. Like how do you? So with so all of the all of the historical stuff mm -hmm. is historical. Like that is what it is. Okay. That's that's. I, I'm pretty sure it comes from the Office of Management and Budget. Um, it was. It was in it. I found it in a weird place because I, I I had looked for budget data before one time and I found like a PDF and it was it was terrible and I found I found this on um, it was like a historical historical information link on like the new Obama budget proposal and so I clicked on it and I found the CSV and I was like score and then I then I just kind of ran with it so. That's yeah. awesome. Very cool stuff. Um, so thank you, Solomon, for coming to talk. Give it up for Solomon again. I gotta say, <laughs> there were um, one of the. This is a, a friend of mine, is a data artist. It says that the, his measure of success is if he's showing something and the crowd goes, oh. And that happened here in like the first couple minutes when that thing transformed. And I'm like, oh, you heard it like someone opened a window. It's like, oh. So I thought that was great. Um, and if I looked rude that I was looking at my phone, like I was, you know, avoiding this, it's only because I was trying so hard to figure out how in 140 characters to keep tweeting every time <laughs> that's happened. I thought this was really great. So thank you again, Solomon. Thank Very you. Very cool stuff. Um,